terrific Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It's not too hot. It's a little chilly. My feet are cold. Woke up cold this morning. It's crazy. Is this blackberry winter? I reckon it is. We've got blackberries blooming everywhere. And I'm riding through town, writing down places. This has got blackberries. This has got blackberries. This has got blackberries in places where y'all won't know to pick them. But I'm writing me down a little itinerary because... This is truly, I reckon, what we call blackberry winter here in the South. And boy, you talk about the South. I don't know if y'all are keeping up with it, but um, Fox News has a new program and it's on their streaming and it's called the McCoys and Hatfields. And we happen to have one of those people who live in this area who is related to one of those sets of families. And we're going to have her on in the near future. And it's so funny to me. How could a feud go on that long? Well, it's been going on, I believe they said 200 years. Are you kidding me? How could you be arguing about something that happened 200 years ago? I think that was the time frame they gave, and I thought, y'all can't be serious. You can't be serious. But I want to remind you about something else that happened a long, long time ago. The DAR is going to be at the Historical Society tonight in ball ground and I want to welcome you to come out and to be with everybody. There's something about little old ladies getting together and talking about our past and how we look at the past. Yesterday I got to spend about 30 minutes with a lady who is 102. 102. Now she was World War II veteran Think about it, ladies. World War II veteran, she is 102. She is still very alive and very, uh, she was very talkative, precious. I, I really enjoyed the visit and I can't wait to share that with y'all. Hopefully we'll get it down later and we'll get to share some of it tomorrow. It blows my mind, the things that she remembered, 102. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Her husband has been dead, I believe she said over 30 years. And I said, are you glad that you outlived him? And she said, well, it's been a long time without him. You know, that's kind of, it's kind of weird. So, but over 30 years, she has been a widow. And it reminded me of this. On April the 29th, I want to invite all you widows and widowers down to Hickory Flat Fellowship Hall. It is at the Hickory, Hickory Flat Church. A 140, and the address is 5301 Hickory Flat Highway in Canton, Georgia. And please load your cars up with your dear friends who are also widows or widowers and come be there. Get there at 4.30 so you can chit-chat and talk to people, get to know folks, and then you will be served a delightful meal, and Miss Vicki Lawson is in charge of that. And I can't say enough thank yous for all the things that she has done the seven years that this meal has been happening. It's about giving back. That's what we should all be doing. We should all be giving back. And again, this is April the 29th. It begins, uh, seating starts at 4.30. Meal starts being served at 5. The concert starts at 6. And you get a little goody gift to leave with about 7 o'clock. Get home before dark. Doesn't that make sense? And it's free. All you have to do is show up. And I love that. And to Bob, Bob and Linda Reese and to Glory Bound, thank you so much for doing this. And this is in honor of one of my friends. So I love it. But again, it's 5301 Hickory Flat Highway, Canton, Georgia. And it is April the 29th, which is my granny's birthday. She was born in 1905. So figure out how old she is in heaven today. Today. Today is a beautiful, beautiful day as far as sunshine goes, but it's a little chilly. It is a little chilly. But if you're thinking about gardening, my granny always said, don't plant your garden before Good Friday. If you do, you're just going to have to have you a mess and you'll have to start over. And I said, okay. So I've always paid attention to what she said. I'm working on redoing my last cookbook and adding stories to it. And I have come up with so many stories from my Aunt Leela, my Aunt Tempe, my Aunt Annie, my Aunt Annie's one of the few that I remember driving. She drive, she drove, she drived. She drove many of the years that the other great aunts didn't drive. And it just blows my mind. She was kind of an independent warrior. And her daughter, Bernice, was one of my favorite, favorite cooks. Very simple, very country cook, but she always had supper on the table the minute that her husband walked into the door. And um, I did that routine and, and it just made sense. You know, you just know that they work hard, they come home, you have supper on the table. 
it works. How many folks do that today? Everybody's running through a drive-thru, they're grabbing a bag of this, they're grabbing this, they're, you know. We don't take the time we used to take to sit and gather around the table. And yesterday, I gotta say a big thank you to the Garden Club of Ball Ground. When they came, um, one of the ladies had never been on TV before and she said, I'm a little bit nervous. And I said, just pretend you're sitting around my kitchen table. And that's kind of how this set was designed. I want you to just come, sit down, feel comfortable and think that you're sitting at the kitchen table because the kitchen table is often where many of the world's problems are solved, often where many of the futures are planned and often where you find out just what's going right in the world. And uh, today, ain't a whole lot going right. We've looked at some crazy stuff happening. We are facing a war here, a war here, a war here. It's crazy. But yesterday when I was talking to Miss Lucille and I thought about World War II, World War II, that blew my mind that she is 102 years old and we could just talk about it. And she talked about this and that in her career. She was an operating room nurse. She's been retired for over 60 years, I believe she said, over 60 years. But she loved what she did. She loved being in the operating room. She loved, and I said, is there one doctor in particular that touched your heart? And she was telling me about a young doctor, and she said, you know, he was just a really, really good guy. When I look back at my life, I've chosen a lot of women to write about in the new book, and it's women who touched my life. There's so many of you, and, and I was thinking about Joyce Bryson this morning and how Joyce Bryson just gathered me up when I first came to television and said, I want you to do this and this and this and this, and she was such a blessing to me. She's no longer here, but her beautiful daughter Denise is, and her sons are, and we have to say, we have to face these Mother's Day without our mothers, and um, there are a lot of mothers, sadly, who will face Mother's Day without their children. One of the greatest losses of children has been suicide or drug addiction, those two things. Suicide or drug addiction. Mothers didn't used to outlive their children because we didn't have a suicide epidemic, we do today. Mothers didn't outlive their children because there wasn't a drug problem like there is today. And it's not just drugs, Alcohol is also a drug, and today we're going to share something with you in a little bit that is the Brady Singleton tribute. Um, every single time I think about somebody drinking and driving, I think about Brady Singleton, and I think about how life would be so different if somebody had chosen something else to do that day besides drink all day long. We have a choice to make. My father, and I wish I had gone ahead and posted the picture of him today because my daddy was very, very handsome. He was also very, very spoiled. Um, my grandparents were um, just very, they spoiled him. And daddy had some problems and he ended up an addict for a while and that's why I am so weird about stuff because I know you have that genetic disposition that Drugs were in your family, and so I'm very cautious about stuff like that. Everybody makes fun of me because I don't drink. I don't, you know, I just, I don't do that stuff. I have to think twice about taking Advil because you know if your parents were alcoholics, if your parents were drug addicts, you have that chemical imbalance in your brain, and you have to fight it. And it is a fight, but you can fight it. And um, I was having a conversation, a young man, 27 years old, was found in his pickup truck. He'd been dead three days. Raced with him every weekend. He was a good kid, got on drugs, and um, died sadly and lay in his pickup truck for three days before anybody found him. That is scary because it could happen to any, any of us. It could happen to any of us. And um, as we face Mother's Day, as we face the world today, We've got to get a hold of it. We've got to stop stop the epidemic, stop the suicide. Um, I don't know how you do this. I don't know how we get them counseling. I don't know how to do it, but I know that together, maybe sitting around the kitchen table, we can come up with a plan that will truly make a difference because no mom wants to get that call. I'm sorry, but your child passed away. And uh, we're getting it every single day. This young man was 27 years old. When I think about us losing Donovan last year, Donovan was just in his early 30s. He was on top of his game. He was an amazing, amazing young talent. 
He was such a sweet and loving kid. And every time I walk in here, I can see him bouncing through the studio and coming over here to hug me. It's a tough, it's a tough act to follow because we thought everything was going to be good. And sadly, he's gone from us. So um, a lot of a lot of mothers. His mom had already passed, and um, I, I don't know how that affected his life, except that he missed his mom a lot. And I know that if his mama had been here, she would have been his encourager. She would have been somebody who, who helped him and lifted him up and lifted his spirits because that's what moms do. That's what moms do. So as we approach Mother's Day, I want y'all to, to pray for all the moms that are going to be hurting, to pray for all the kids who are struggling and to get together and let's sit around the kitchen table and let's make a difference in the lives of those that are hurting. I never think about Mother's Day that I don't think about Ron and Shirley. And um, nobody wants to visit a grave on Mother's Day, but sadly that's usually what happens. So, so we're going to go now to some happiness. And we're going to go to the Garden Club because the Garden Club and Ball Ground came to visit with us yesterday. And thank you very much to them for my lunch at Mike's Restaurant. As always, it was amazing. I think they do make the best collard greens in the whole wide world. They're probably better than mine. I can't believe I said that. But it's really, really good. And the fried green tomatoes that they did yesterday, unbelievable. The tomatoes came from r &A Orchards, and they fried them up. And, oh, my gosh, they were awesome. So, so get out today and enjoy a good lunch with some friends. And get out today and walk around the Botanical Garden and Ball Ground. Remember, it is free. We're going to show you now a little, some blippets of it as we had the event on Friday. This was the uh, Ball Ground Council had their annual tea. And, you know, we were honoring a lady who was sitting in Chick-fil-A with her grandson and fell over dead. And we were thinking about, it could happen to any of us. It could happen to any of us. So guarantee yourself a good day today. Say, I'm going to make the very most of today because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And I think about she was sitting there with her grandson having a good day. What a great way to leave here. What a great way to leave here, to just be doing something that you love. But get out today. It's a beautiful day to visit the Botanical Garden in Ball Ground. And again, it is adjacent to City Hall. It is free to everybody. Stop and get yourself a lunch and just sit there and enjoy because there's tons of stuff blooming right now. We're going to go now to a video of the ladies in their hats as we did a hat parade contest. Okay, we have Helen here, number 17. <laughs>
got Diane in her beautiful uh, magenta hat, and she is number 12. to show you the pictures of the food because those ladies as cool as their hats were and as much fun as they were the food was fantastic now the last next to the last lady with the white hat on and the black band on it the black flower if I were giving an award for the best food of the day she would have gotten it she made this amazing meringue thing it was blackberries and strawberries, and it was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And, and honestly, everybody shows out, and everybody does something really, really cool. But there were just about three or four items that were like over the top amazing. And her meringue little thingamadoodles, and I don't know what you call them, but I'll tell you what you call them when they go in your mouth. You call them awesome, awesome. They were so good. And they're so light and fluffy and they just dissolve in your mouth. You could eat more than one of them. But I went back to get a second one and they were all gone. Somebody scarfed them all down. She did tell me that it was, she had to do two recipes before she got it right. And one of the other things that the ladies do, they do stuffed peppers with cheeses. And oh my gosh, they're so good. These ladies are pretty creative. 
pretty amazing in the kitchen, and I love the stuff. Those, those little, oh my gosh, those peppers were fantastic. There are so many things that we go to the kitchen and we say, okay, what is our favorite thing? What do people request all the time? Or you try something new and then it's a big hit. Everything we had that day, that. Now those little suckers, oh my gosh, I could have eaten every one of those. They melt in your mouth. And they were talking about the filling and then what the crust was made out of. And I can't remember, but oh my gosh, y'all. They were like to die for. I don't know who did that, but I want to become her best friend. So I want to get invited to her house often, and I want her to make those every time she invites me. So I just got a prayer request. Um, Y'all know that Jen has been battling cancer, chemo and chemo and chemo, and it's just crazy. She needs your prayers because they're going to be making another trip to MD Anderson. This time, though, they get to fly out there instead of that awful, long, miserable, miserable drive. I've driven to Houston, Texas, and I'll just say it basically stinks. It's a horrible, horrible drive. But this time, they're going to be flying, so they'll just be flying out, flying back, and won't be gone very long, which is really, really cool. But she needs your prayers. She's had to be down at Northside Hospital for a little bit with some pain issues. And um, I also want you to, to put my friend Shirley on your prayer list. Shirley and I have been friends since we were young teens, actually since I was about 13 years old. And that was a long, long time ago. She is going in for some surgery and um, she and Jen kind of had the same surgeries years ago. And from this, I think they've developed some problems and Shirley's gonna be facing some surgery on May the 10th. So please say a prayer for her. I talked to her yesterday and she said the pain is unbelievable and I'm worried and I'm stressing and they're going to do a liver biopsy. And she's scared. She's scared. And um, we, you know, she said, I'm ready to go. Her sweet husband passed away years ago and she said, I want to be with Dan. But she has grandkids and she has a sweet, sweet puppy, Bella, that she absolutely adores. And she said, I need to be here for Bella because Bella needs me and Bella does need her because Bella is spoiled rotten. So, so please say a prayer for her. There's so many people fighting and, and facing hard times. And when you're going into surgery, and I told her this, I said, Shirley, I said, last year, I never expected to come out of the operating room. I never expected to make it. I didn't think there'd be a problem coming home because I didn't think I'd come home. I thought I'd go on to glory because I didn't think at my age and with the things we were dealing with that I would survive the surgery. And when I did, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm waking up. I'm waking up and I'm not in heaven. I'm waking up. And it was very strange, but it was a very good feeling because I was just, and nobody knew how scared I was, but I knew there was a lot going on. Got to go back to the doctor next week. Got a few things happening that they're checking and it's just, you just got to stay on top of it. So as we get older, I think we keep the doctors a little bit busier, but it's okay. Just, just go and find out what's wrong and get the problem solved and move right along. Now we're going to take a commercial break and when we come back, I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit more about poke salad because I have seen folks cooking poke salad and it disappear and it does a disappearing act. So you must like it. And one of our guests yesterday, Karen, said as a kid, her granny and her mama taught her to cook poke salad. How many of y'all have gotten out this spring and picked your poke salad and how many of it have put it in your freezer or do you just eat it fresh? I'd love to hear from y'all and I'd love to see how you do it. I actually, one year, I made a casserole out of that stuff. And it was when Granny Harris was teaching me to make it years and years and years ago. And I just couldn't eat it like it was, so I made a casserole out of it using the eggs that you put in it, but I also added cheese and sour cream and did like a, like I make a spinach souffle, I made a poke salad souffle and everybody ate it and I didn't tell them it was poke salad, they thought it was spinach, but it was poke salad, so not my favorite thing to cook, but I know a lot of people love it and um, it is one of those things. It is a spring cleaning and um, now's the time. I've been seeing it growing everywhere. So get out there and gather it. And we're gonna do the commercial and then we're gonna do a little video and give you a little tips on how to do it.
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? The mountains are calling, and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. salad at the top lot. This is um, one of the most beautiful views in Gilmer County and if you have not been across Fort Mountain right now, go now. The trees are full. The trees are absolutely beautiful. Take a trip and go over to uh, eat lunch over in Chatsworth. I, I just love that trip across the mountain. Any time of year in the in the winter you can see more things than you can see in the spring. But in the spring, once the trees just blossom, and so you just saw a shot of what we took, a picture of last fall. But get out and go across Fort Mountain. We're going to take you now to the top lot as we were doing poke salad. Now, it is a process, and this, this poke salad was washed four times. And I did have some stalks, and I did try to fry them up, and I didn't like it. So done with that. Won't do that again. Won't waste my time and energy. But poke salad cooked up. Folks are liking it, and liking it with scrambled eggs. So here we go. Mr. Ella J., what are you doing? We're cooking it down. I it's see starting that. to boil down a little I bit I see now. that. It was full to the top. We took a 10-minute yep. break, and I want you to look here. Look here, look here. You know my, my favorite shot is that fire. Is there something about a woman who loves fire? Does that mean I'm a pyromaniac? I could make a joke. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love those mountains in the background too. Can we talk a little bit about this top lot and what it means to you? This top lot is home to me. There's a feeling about this lot, this place over here that I've never had since I built the house over there on the other mountain. It's crazy, isn't it? Wish I could have built it here, but that's not how the cookie crumbled. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, now that we've picked up the crumbles, why don't you come over here and build you a house? Well, we may do that someday. I don't know. I think that would be really, really cool. You know, when we look at these, that poke salad has gone down at least a third already. Yep. 
That's amazing, isn't it? In what? Really, about 20 minutes, and that's a big old pot. Yep. And now, how how boiled are you going to boil them before we take them off and cool them? I'll let you know. All right. So, an estimate of people's time, if they are doing this, maybe when it feels right? No, it'll turn. It'll lose that light green color and go to a dark green. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it'll, uh, you'll, you'll, well, I mean, not a lot of people are going to do this. It's a lot of work, folks, how it is. It's a lot of work, y'all. Yeah. It really is a lot of work. When, but... you, when you have a friend over, uh, you don't, you don't, it's like blackberries. You don't share that with many people because it takes forever to get it where you want it. Does that mean it's cool because you shared your blackberries and I got to make blackberry pie for your neighbors and they well, loved it? Yeah. Yeah, they loved it. They did. They did, they and, did. Uh, and according to the blooms, you're going to be picking lots of blackberries again I don't think I'm going to pick any. <gasps> don't tell them. I've still got all them others. I don't care. I don't care. You know, there'll be a day you'll be old and gone, and I can't yeah. pick them. Yeah. That is really cool. That is amazing how much it's cooked down. I wow. Know. It's, it's coming on down. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Because we've used this water for this batch... Will you start with fresh water every yep. time? Okay. Yep. Okay. You didn't do that a while ago. You got the cart in front of the horse. It's better to put the pulp salad in first, dry, and, do it. and then fill it up with water. And when you see it start seeping up through the, the get it up right there. Uh, Am I fired? Could be. Oh no. Well. Uh, then you know you got it right. Well. Well, I'd say that right now, this is just about the coolest shot I ever saw in my life. Not many people would go to the trouble of making that much poke salad. Well, there's a whole lot more to come. <laughs> yes, there is. Yes, there is. Way more. That is so cool. So we're going to take a break now, and when we come back, it'll be the right color green, won't it? Probably. I think it will. Yeah. I think it will. Now, is there more picking in your future? I don't know how much this is going to be. Uh, I like to have plenty on hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm, you can't guess what this will be. Probably, I'm guessing 12 or 15 quarts, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to have plenty. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, that was hot, Careful. wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't hit me. Y'all see that steam and you see that fire? Isn't that not the coolest thing ever? If you were in the house, your house would be smelling like yes. poke salad. Yes, right it now. would. That's why we're outside. And the yeah. wind is blowing that smell away. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. There's really nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just that it would smell like poke salad. Yeah, it would. Yeah, <laughs> for, it would. Uh, for several days. Look at how much it's cooked down. Goodness, yeah. goodness. Okay, folks. It's poke salad picking time in Ella J. Now, I'm a picker, and you know that, okay? But today, I've been doing a different kind of picking. I've been all over this, no, not all over the county. You know how people say they've been all over, no, that's not the case. But I have been here and there picking poke salad where I had spotted it coming up earlier this same season. And so, we're going to uh, make you an interesting little video right now. We're sitting back on old Blue Ridge Road in Ella J. And it's uh, such a special place to me. And we thank the Harrisons for making this beautiful Harrison Park over here. We're right up on the hill above it at the steps of the old home place where Mrs. Edna Pinson used to live. Mrs. Edna Pinson was a school teacher and a good one. And she lived right here for many, many, I know it was 40 or 50 years, right there is where her house used to sit. And this was her steps. And I can see Miss Edna right now coming down these steps every morning. She would walk, the school was just right over there across the river. And that's where I went to school. But I'd actually, I didn't have Miss, Miss Edna and, uh, I was never in her class, but she was such a sweet lady. I'd see her around all the time. And I happened to know that she would walk from here every morning. She'd walk over to the school and teach, and then she'd walk back. So she went up these very steps, I'm certain, okay? Her house was right there. And uh, 
I remember one time we had a, a field trip and that was Miss Ruby Pinson. Now y'all remember her. She's as another Pinson, okay? Miss Ruby Pinson. This is Edna. Ruby taught the uh, fourth grade and Miss Edna here taught the sixth grade. And I was in the fourth grade with Miss Ruby Pinson and she brought us around through here one day, walking right through here, fourth grade folks, that was me, and on a little field trip. And I remember right down there, just right down there, okay? Right in that bin right there, I found a sparrow's nest. <laughs> I found a sparrow's nest. And she helped me get it out of the bushes and we brought it and we brought it back to the classroom and studied it. Now, sparrows, if I remember correctly, they didn't have like an opening. It was just sealed up, am I right, I think? It's just a big old ball of, of uh, leaves and stuff. But I remember she saved that and, and Miss Ruby did. And Miss Ruby's the one that, she's the reason I can read right now, okay? Miss Ruby is. We went out through there and across the old five and we went up on the side of that hill over there to uh, one of the other teachers. One of the other teachers is home. It was, it was Miss Parks. We went to their home, and I guess Miss Parks and Ruby Pinson was in together on this thing. But it was such a memorial day. We we learned things, and she'd stop and talk to us about stuff that she knew. And then later on, there was a song wrote about Ella J. The guy that wrote it, they call him Mr. Ella J. And I know it's silly, but we have so much fun with it. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. These are precious memories. This old road right here is where the rednecks would drink wine on Sunday. They come back here in their 56 Fords and their 57 Fords, and there'd be Paps Blue Ribbon all over the place. They'd be sitting around drinking beer. That never was me, and yes, I'm being honest, it wasn't me, but I remember them old boys that did that. And uh, what, what times, what times, and how times have changed. Don't you know? Really different now. But anyway. About 90 miles north of Atlanta Where the Kusawati lay They come out of the hills to pay their telephone bills In a town called Ella J. When the mayor drove a shiny 62 Corvette Slim was in a cruiser with a Cobra jet And what you see is exactly what you get If you come to Ella J Ella J, a mighty fine place to be Ella J Good enough for you and me, yeah. 69 Road Runner, Charger RT, Pistol Group Force Speed 383. Boys, that's the way it all used to be on this very road in Ella J. hope you enjoy our video we hope you like poke salad if you don't you need to start liking it it's good and it's good for you and i done showed you how to cook it so you're all set to go thanks for watching i'll see you soon wow what a beautiful beautiful spring day just like today it's a beautiful spring day the wind is a little bit up and it's a little bit chilly and all the things that you see us go out and do, he'll pick up the phone and call and say, hey, are you up for a gig? I've got some stuff I want to talk about. I've got some things I want to see. And yeah, I grab the iPad and we go out and do it. We don't edit that because it adds too much time, too much, uh, don't have time. And we want to get it on there when it's fresh and new. And it is fresh and new and it is unedited. And you can hear the wind, but that wind was, uh, yeah, it was blowing pretty, pretty good that day. But it was just a beautiful, beautiful spring day. If you haven't been down to Harrison Park, go out on your lunch break even and walk down there. A lot of people walk on their lunch break and uh, you can hear the river rolling and, and you can see the beautiful, beautiful things of spring. And yeah, we're all whining about the pollen because my black car was so pretty and so clean on Saturday and on Sunday morning, it was yellow again. So 
We fuss about the pollen, but there's nothing any prettier than the spring or the fall in these beautiful North Georgia mountains. We're gonna take you somewhere now that um, sadly is where a mom and dad will be visiting for Father's Day, for Mother's Day. Ron and Shirley Singleton will have to stop by the beautiful cemetery where their precious son was laid to rest. He was three years and nine months old. He was tragically killed when individuals chose to drink and drive. Drinking, drugging, whatever, if you choose to get in a vehicle and you take somebody's life, that is forever. Sadly, the people who were responsible for this didn't get a life sentence. They didn't, they almost got a smack on the hand, which was, which was pretty sad. I happened to be in the courtroom when one of them was sentenced and uh, it was pretty discouraging because we need to make folks accountable for what they're doing. And we have all seen some lessons like that in our community in the next few days. A mom's gonna be saying goodbye to her 27-year-old son. Drugs, alcohol, it takes lives and it steals our happiness from our families. Please say a prayer for every mom out there who is fighting and struggling as we face Mother's Day. There's so many people who will be sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee, a tear in their eye, and all they have left are memories. And um, I think about my friend Mary Ann. She had one son, and he didn't die from that. He died from heart issues. But we know that Mother's Day is not really that happy time that we would love for it to be for many of us. So we're gonna share now the Brady Singleton tribute. I can never thank Jennifer Danner enough for the original song she wrote. She put this piece together. I chose the other music because I said, I want something that reminds us resurrection ground. That grave is only resurrection ground. Um, that grave is just a place to spend the night. I think about Brian Rittenberry and what an amazing job he did with that song. So I chose the music hoping to let us know that, yeah, the grave is there, but it is not the end. It is just resurrection ground. Here we go. Today is 6th, uh, 16th. Oh, my oh, oh, goodness, just look oh. at that. My you goodness. Want it oh, off. Want it, it off. off. Uh -huh. My goodness. Going to get it off. There's Brady's right. brand new tractor. Right. Today is September 16, oh 2007. Yes, wow. <laughs> Three year old Brady getting his first tractor. Let me set you on. Now, don't, don't put your foot on that right there for a minute until I show you what to do. All right. Now then, let me get him up there. <laughs> Just a place to spend the night It's just a place to spend the night A place to rest before my fight Morning will come with a shout of my King And then I will rise so high above the clouds Just a place to spend the night Oh, there is a thought that cheers me on It'll bring you comfort after I'm gone God made a promise there would come Now, he'll send out 
Son to gather us in. Those He has saved, redeemed from their sins, and the children who seek. Praise God, they will be the very first ones to rise. It's just a place to spend the night, place to rest before my flight. Morning will come with a shout of my King. And then I will rise so high above the clouds and beyond the sky. It's not a grave. It's just a place to spend the night. It's not a grave. It's just a place to spend the night. We come here often where our loved ones live. It seems like yesterday We join hands to pray How sweet it would be If we were standing round When this cold grave It turns to resurrection ground Resurrection ground No more graves alive <laughs> it's a big horse, isn't it? When Jesus and oh. be for all eternity, this is not the end. It's resurrection ground, resurrection ground. No more graves allowed. We'll meet them in the end. will be for all eternity this is not the end it's resurrection ground this is not the end it's resurrection You know, I thank the Lord for songs with meaning. That's why I love singing with the inspirations, because we have a message, not just music. Back in 1992, my brother and his wife had to go through the deepest valley they'd ever been through and ever will go through. They had a little three-year-old girl that one week she was playing in my backyard with my little three-year-old girl. And just the following week, we had no idea that she'd be rushed to the hospital just as normal as any child playing in my backyard one week, the next week rushed into the emergency room, two days later going through a major brain surgery, having a tumor. Through complications and different things that took place, the Lord saw fit to take little Marie Beth Dibler home. Just a matter of weeks, just a matter of days. Do you know, a couple days later, we had to go out to the graveyard and see a little white 48-inch casket. Some of you have been there. We had to watch that casket go down under the ground, and I thought, what could I say to my brother? I wanted to be an encouragement to him. But although I didn't have the words to say, I'm glad that God still gives a song in the darkest night. We want you to listen to this last verse again, because this is the song in his darkest night that God gave my brother the day, the very day that he buried his three <laughs> Oh, buddy. We come here often where our loved ones lay. <laughs> it seems like yesterday we join hands to pray. How sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave it turns to resurrection ground. Resurrection ground. We'll meet them in the air, no more parting there, with Jesus we'll be for all eternity, 
this is not the end. It's resurrection ground. This is not the end. It's resurrection ground. Ready for Kong. King Kong. <sighs> wow. That was good. More? What? Yes. Wow. Wow. How about yes. those big dinosaurs that are in Kong? Dinosaur? Oh, wow. that was scary. Golly, that was scary. I okay. want to see another dinosaur. Yeah. All right. Let's dinosaur. See Whoa, Ooh. that was so scary. And King Kong. Sometimes life is hard to understand How a light just keeps on burning While another candle ends And how a smile can change it all I remember And how there's hope after a fall Now and ever I see him smiling there and you see him everywhere And I can almost hear him now Singing Jesus loves me, this I know His eye is on the sparrow And Jesus loves me, Mommy And Daddy, you know that One day we'll laugh and play like Yesterday and now Jesus loves me, this I know I'll see you on the morrow When darkness settles across the sky The bright and morning star will still shine bright And he holds him in his arms of love forever shelter an angel sigh from up above the storms or weather you see him smiling there you see him everywhere and I can almost hear him now I'm singing and Jesus loves me this I know his eye is on the sparrow Jesus loves me, Mommy and Daddy, you know that One day we'll laugh and play like yesterday and now and Jesus loves me, this I know I'll see you on the morrow Jesus loves me, this I know, I'll see you on the mall.
drink and do drugs, please, 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 if you need help, pick up the phone and call a hotline and get help. If you are somewhere and you feel like you're too impaired to drive, pick up the phone and call a friend. Pick up the phone and call somebody. Um, it is so very, very sad. I've watched that thing for years and years and years, and I always see something else that touches my heart. And the one thing I see is the glitter in the eyes of those two amazing parents. That light and that glitter sadly went out the day they lost Brady. And um, so many of y'all were there to support them, to be for them, to be there with them. But there is nothing we can do to replace that precious child. So remember today, if you are drinking and driving, you are risking destroying somebody else's family, somebody else's life, and sadly often taking your own life. So. So let's get it together, guys. Um, let's let's make a difference. Let's sit around the kitchen table and let's he have these conversations that will maybe change. We have, we have gone to a world of it's all me and I don't, you know, it's all about me and what do I want and what do I, that's not the way it was meant to be. We are here to be our brother's keeper. We are here to help each other. And um, I've all day long, I've been thinking about a precious, precious couple, Arthur and Vera Allred. Arthur and Vera Allred were two of the strongest people I ever met in my life. Loved them so much. I used to sit with her at church every Sunday, and um, I think about her, and I think about him and, and their wisdom. There's somebody out there who, who made us who we are today, and I would like to give them a little bit of credit for making me who I am today. Every time I pick up an apple, I think about Arthur Allred because he would say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, I'm eating an apple a day and the doctor's still around, so I don't know whether that's the truth or not, but he had a refrigerator on the carport that he just kept packed with apples, and he said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Maybe laughter a day will keep the depression away. Maybe a phone call from a friend will make a difference in our life. Let's do something to lift somebody else's spirits. Let's do something to be there for somebody else, and let's make a difference in a life. We all have the ability to do it. Doesn't cost you much, isn't a lot of trouble, but it's something that will come back to you 10,000 times. It's time for me to get out of here, and I hope that you have something wonderful planned for this beautiful, beautiful day. If nothing else, get your camera out and go and capture spring. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC.